In recent years, uh, Golan Harris has become well known for having created the idea of a trust index, a Go the Golan Harris Trust Index, which is now a measure of some form of corporate social responsibility. Is there, what's the connection between the Ronald McDonald houses, McDonald's, and your coming up with that idea? Well, the word trust has always been part and parcel of uh, our credo at Golan Harris, even before it became fashionable. Now, today, everybody seems to be talking about the word, which is great, but uh, because I think they realize that without trust, a lot of these major companies uh, would be in trouble. And uh, the whole trust index was something that we came up with some research on in, tr in testing what the index was as far as trust is concerned with some of the major companies uh, in the country. And we've even expanded it to go to Asia and Europe as well. So we try to uh, come up with this index to see how well a company is doing in terms of its, uh, if its trust quotient, if you will. How broad, uh, when you use the term trust, uh, how broad are the issues that you cover as far as what constitutes trust? Well, I've tr explained it in some meaningful <laughs> way. <laughs> well, trust is so important, I think. It's so uh, important in everything we do in terms of business or in our personal lives because uh, without it, you can't... Uh, uh, you can't really function. And uh, it even caused me to write a book about it a couple of years ago uh, because we use the word trust. And then when the er Enrons and the Worldcons came about with all the scandals of the first part of this uh, century, uh, somebody came to me and said, well, why don't you do a book on the subject because you've always talked about trust. So somebody contacted me, an agent called me, and... Uh, like a lot, like a lot of things in life, I don't, uh, I didn't react until I was, I had a deadline. So uh, when when they committed to do the book, then I had to sit down and figure out how to do it. Earlier we talked about uh, ethical behavior and performance and the role of the CEO in setting a tone within a corporation. What do you view, or or do you have a view on the value of? mission statements and credos and things of that nature which some companies have and other companies dismiss. Uh, what's your viewpoint? Well, I think mission statements are fine if you really live by them on a day-to-day -day basis. There's too many companies that come up with a lofty mission statement and uh, they'll, they'll put it on their website or maybe once or they'll uh, have a little booklet on it and but if, uh, if that's the way it is, then I think it's meaningless. I think you have to live by the mission statement on a day-to-day -day basis and be constantly reminded of it and, and make it as practical as possible and something that, uh, that really is part and parcel of your culture because otherwise I think it's just uh, it's a feel-good thing for a few people and, uh, and it's meaningless. Uh, do you have uh, an ethics training program for your people or an indoctrination thing for the people within your organization or something that would be similar to that to get all the players on the same page? Well, we do that uh, when they certainly with the new people who start with us get, you know, a booklet about mm -hmm. that and they, they're shown certain videos and certain, uh, uh, obviously the website, we constantly try to reinforce that sort of thing. So uh, we do talk a lot about it, and uh, we have a strong intern program that we've had for quite a few years in all of our offices where we hire a, a good number of, of people out of that intern program. And they come from uh, all walks of life. They don't, they're not necessarily just the traditional kinds of students. So we look for people who are really interested in this or certain people who might want a career change. We've had a couple of lawyers and a couple of accountants who uh, wanted to go get into this business and they've turned uh, into pretty good uh, practitioners. You mentioned uh, Ralph Larson earlier in the importance that he placed on talking uh, with and communicating with both internal and external audiences. 
one of the things that Johnson Johnson, of course, is known for is their credo, which uh, I understand that uh, they have a session on it annually for all of their employees. Is it something that you feel is beneficial that would you could replicate, or I mean, not you personally, but is yeah, I think a good thing. No, I think it's a very good thing, and I think that uh, they're a good example of uh, a company that has lived by that. You know, I guess they're a hundred-year-old company, and uh, certain companies that have lasted seem to be the ones that uh, that do have those kinds of values. Again, you're, you know, it's a generalization, but some of the companies that have gotten in trouble, like the WorldComs and the Enrons and the Tycos, have been quick-fix kinds of situations where they've overreacted to Wall Street and have taken so many shortcuts and played so many games that they shouldn't have that they've really... Uh, really destroyed the company long term.